What's up guys, welcome back. I get quite a lot of questions about how I do the blue steel that features on many of my models. Last year I think I put it on pretty much everything I painted. I guess it's almost become my signature look. What's that look like? So anyway, this video is going to show how I go about achieving that finish. Here's what we're going to be aiming for. You can see that it looks pretty decent and some might say it's really, really, really ridiculously good looking. And the good news is it's not as difficult to paint as you might first think. Over a black base, we're going to start with scale colour Caspian Blue and um, we're just going to sketch in where we want our highlights to go. We do this quite simply by blocking in the highlights, making no attempt to blend them. You might remember this approach from my Ultra Smurfs video. Just a quick aside, the blue that I'm using here appears slightly brighter on the video than in real life. In reality, it's, it's a bit more like dark sea blue, except without the green tone. Just so that you don't get too bored, here's where I ended up placing the initial highlights. You can see at this stage that it still looks pretty ugly, but once we start blending out the edges, you'll be surprised just how quickly things start to take shape. Make a roughly 1 to 1 mix of black and Caspian blue, and thin it down with some water to a glaze consistency. Now we'll glaze up to the edges of the blue sections, allowing some of the glaze to cover a small part of the blue. Direction is very important here, so make sure that you're always pulling the glaze towards the highlight. Try not to rush this, you'll need to build up the glaze over multiple layers. Your goal here is to blur the edges of the blue in order to soften the transition so that it fades smoothly into the black. Remember to let each glaze dry completely before applying another one. If you don't, you run the risk of ripping the surface of the paint, which will leave a stain that can be quite hard to fix. When I'm doing this, the approach I take is to glaze one part, then while that dries, I'll move on to another section, then another, and so on, jumping about between sections until I work my way back around to the first part. That way, I'm not sitting waiting for each glaze to dry.
Next we'll use Scale Color Bearing Blue and we'll mix up a fat glaze. If you haven't watched my video on fat glazing, this is roughly two parts water to one part paint, essentially a thicker glaze than normal. With this consistency we can build up a transition a bit more organically by simply pulling the brush across the surface to where we want our brightest highlight. Generally on these flat sections we want that to be along the bottom edge. Incidentally, bearing blue is actually just Caspian blue with a bit of white added, so if you're feeling lazy or if you can't find decent equivalents, you can just do the whole process with Caspian blue and white. On these rounded areas, we'll put the highlight in the center. Don't be scared to go back over areas you've already done. You want to make sure the colour is nice and bright, so it's good to apply multiple layers to build up opacity. Throw in a few edge highlights here and there as well. When you're doing edge highlights, it's good to use the consistency of the paint to help fade these into the highlights. You don't really want them to be one solid line along the edge.
Add some more water to your bearing blue to make a glaze. And we'll use that to blur out any sections where the edge of our highlight is a little too harsh. Now we'll add a decent amount of white to our bearing blue and we'll apply some sharp highlights. These are essentially edge highlights, but again don't put them along the whole length of each edge, just focus on the areas close to your brightest spots of colour. For the final step we'll use pure white and we'll add tiny white highlights right in the very centre of our light flares. We'll also try and catch some of the edges along the dark areas. This is the same kind of principle you use when you're doing gemstones. The little white highlights at the top help to give you that sparkly effect. On the wheel here we'll highlight the little details along the lower edge where the light would catch them. There's also a bunch of tiny holes on the trim of the wheel, so we'll hit the lower edge of these to help them pop out. You don't need to do them all, but we'll try and paint a fair amount of them.
we have the final result. Dear God, it's beautiful. Alright guys, so I hope that was useful to you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop a comment in the box below. You can help the channel out by liking and sharing the video. Hit subscribe if you're new and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks again. Bye for now. Thank you.